Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the second episode of Tante wa mo shindeiru. And yeah, that title, you know, I, before I thought that that was going to be like a funny meme title that I have to struggle not to laugh at whenever I would say it in a video. Uh, little did I know that it would actually just be a cruel reminder that my favorite character is just dead. That's that's what it actually ended up being. But yeah, anyway, uh, last episode we had the start of the show and we had like a double length and I checked this episode. This one is standard length, so it should be a bit easier in that regard. But yeah, I know I, I, re I reacted to the previous episode just like a couple days ago. I picked up the show late, so I do have some catching up to do. So I would like to do that. Also, I just yeah, want to see where the show goes from here because yeah, I had like some theories bouncing, bouncing around in my head about kind of like how you go forward with that declaration that the, the detective is just dead. So I am curious about that. And the best way to find out is to, of course, watch the episode. And that's kind of why I'm here. But uh, I just still, just still a little bit of hesitation to jump on in though. Just, um, just, do you really want to live in a world without without siesta? I I don't. But we're jumping in anyway. Let's see exactly how this goes. So let's dive on in. Three, two, one, play. Here we have our usual Katakawa and uh, Funimation intro sequences, cause can't go without them, I guess. Okay, we're starting with the plane again. <laughs> Or no, we're once again misleading you with planes. Okay, so looks like we are going to be showing her before she's dead, which is what I was hoping for. But <laughs> I knew she was a keeper. <laughs> I mean, I would be more surprised if she didn't, honestly. <laughs> and then she frickin' died. So, I do hope we get a decent amount of flashbacks showing her. That's really the most I can hope for at this point. That was a little bit too brief for my liking. <laughs> Impinges? Is that a real word? Why did you have to say it again? That's a voice I think I recognize. Also, opening. Did we get the opening first episode? I don't think we did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we didn't. Oh, okay, that was cool. The zoom out of the eye, I like that. So I do wonder who the red hair, red eyed girl is. <laughs> also, yeah, um, she looks like an idol. Koko de Ikiteru. That sounds familiar. Maybe we got this last time. I don't know. I mean, Body God has like the ED of the episode. I don't remember things. But yeah, that one girl is anything but an idol, I will be a little bit surprised. She just blows up into confetti. Or beams of light, whatever those are. So yeah. Uh... <laughs> I still remember after all this time. At least just not a stapler. I definitely recognize his voice. Yeah, Kimi. Kimi. That's uh, right, Kimi. <laughs> uh, apparently, there's no no for an answer here. And oh my god, she does. This is a lot like Sanjay Gahada talking to Araragi for the first time. <laughs> yeah, you don't want her to stick that any deeper. You stuck your fingers in his mouth. 
you you are entirely to blame for whatever happened there. I think she's in a bad mood. Probably should call a teacher or something. Okay. Well, that 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 went into a direction. Uh, what seriously? What is this girl's deal? I'm getting really curious now. Also, do I get a hug too? <laughs> That's a good question. What is her goal? <laughs> well, we'll get to know each other going forward. It's fine. So her name is... Nagis... Natsunagi Nagisa. Okay. <laughs> that's yeah, it's probably for the for the best. Okay, a request. I mean legendary is a strong word. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely the red haired girl red eyed girl from the Lost Pets. Definitely some <laughs> Definitely some impressive stuff for sure. Oh, she's Kitty now. Okay, that's why she sounds familiar. Gotcha. Yeah, she definitely sounds like Kitty now. The more you listen to her, it's like her tone of voice, how she speaks to him. Also, Kotori from Data Live. Yeah, that is what he was. The sidekick of the legendary detective. What? What? Are are we speaking in riddles? Like, if you don't know, then how do you know you... I, how do you... I'm gonna stop. But how do you know that? Yeah, it's not a lot to go on. Yeah, she needs a legendary detective for this case. <laughs> oh, I'm kind of getting curious who X is. A year ago. Oh? Are you sure this is an Angel Beats? Or a flyable heart. So, I mean, I'm guessing it's, you know, siesta. But it's probably too obvious. Because that'd become like a bit of a reincarnation sort of thing. Sort of. Right. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't tell me if it wasn't relevant to the plot. <laughs> yeah, especially in works of fiction, I'm sure they would <laughs> utilize that. <laughs> yes, your heart wants what your heart wants. So could that be just him, like the one that she wants to meet? Because if the heart was, is siesta, that could certainly be possible, but we don't, have, we don't have much to go on right now, so there's not too much I can do speculation-wise. I mean, yeah, you don't really know much, so... But that's not going to be the end of it. Definitely determined. I mean... <laughs> I 
<laughs> Ow. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's funny that she's about to bring up Jiko Manzoku, self satisfaction, because Kirino, Kirino's voice actress voices her, and there's a scene in that anime where Kuroneko has a kind of a similar speech about that concept. Uh, well, that, I mean, you look great. Like, damn. I'm, <laughs> I mean, you know, substitute for siesta, but damn. <laughs> I really do love her beautiful red eyes. <laughs> yeah, I knew our, our eyes were getting there eventually. That's way too captivating. There's no such thing. <laughs> I swear. I mean, have you seen your collarbone? Yeah, she really does look gorgeous in that outfit. <laughs> okay, you just steal our stuff. Or someone else's stuff. <laughs> well, we got him. Uh, that wasn't too difficult. Well, maybe he is kind of legendary. You're welcome. Nice to see you too. I, well, <laughs> have you met my new girlfriend? He was just absolutely gorgeous, by the way. Ow! <laughs> that is not a good reason to assault someone. Fooby, I'll try to remember that. Fooby. <laughs> My girl. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Kano Joki and girlfriend are just her, you know. That may have been what they did there. <laughs> I mean, you got nice red hair and resolve. That was the second thing. <laughs> Maybe we could come with you. Yes, tag along. I would love to tag along. Whew. I just I can't get over how gorgeous she is. I mean, I'll, I'll get used to it eventually, probably, but not not in this episode. Now she's gonna wear that outfit all the time. Man, security. <laughs> That's what she said. Is this the big house? Yeah, I kind of got that impression. <laughs> I feel like I was misled. Well, I don't know Japanese slang. At least not a lot of it. You know, beyond Yabe. What was, what was the Japanese where they said Beso, I think? Like, Villa? <laughs> okay, is that Komori? The bat guy? I think it is, yeah. <laughs> I am a legendary sidekick. Without a, without a detective. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> nice to see there's these two getting along. <laughs> um, who is this guy? Why are we here? I want to go home. Please buy me ice cream. Well, yeah, wouldn't come just to, just to say hi. What's wrong? Siesta's dead. That's what's wrong. He's got a beautiful girl next to him. That might have some effect on stuff. Who probably has Siesta's heart. <laughs> Does that name ring a bell? Might just call you Natsu. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably just call it Nagisa, honestly. Even though I'm pretty sure there's another Nagisa, another show this season, but it's fine. <coughs> <laughs> right. He is a bat. Not a man, a bat. And an android. <laughs> He's got the tentacle thing that comes out of his face. You should you should you should have seen it. <laughs> yeah, I saw it, I believe him. Okay, he's still able to do it. I thought I may have disabled that if he's in prison, but... <laughs> yeah, he can hear that Doki Doki. I feel like this is a big stretch, but okay. How, how well? <laughs> that look on her face is like the t I see who your friends who your kind of friends are <laughs> I don't know how much choice you have in the matter yeah it's not like it's a stethoscope that's gotta be on it uh, I mean, if my theory is correct, then yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, didn't quite reach. Is that? Oh, that's because she has the same heart. The the stuff is still in effect. Okay, that's what he was doing. Okay, wow, that was a clever way to showcase the truth. I mean, I already guessed it, but still, that's that's cool. Yeah, I, I remembered, but thank you for the reminder. Anyway. It is her heart. We're going full like the angel beats, flyable heart, whatever you whatever you want to reference. I mean, there's a lot of weird right now. <laughs> yeah, and yet you still felt it connected to him enough to do that. That is kind of what I was thinking earlier. Man, what a thing to, to deal with. <laughs> how does she... Yeah, how does she deal with this? How does she handle this? I wouldn't really call it a coincidence, but... Is she gonna hit it? Da. Uh... Huh. 
<laughs> yeah, it does was kind of rude. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow okay i guess that had an effect uh, broke through whatever emotional wall was there <laughs> but I mean, if we're to get to a siesta, it really doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, you actually kind of gave me close to tearing up. Yeah, I mean, we got what we wanted. Did she? How would you know that? <sighs> okay. So, are we just now going to do detective together going forward? Possibly get married? Definitely. It is okay to be yourself. I do like how, since there's so much focus on the heart, it's an excuse to have the camera on her chest. Okay. Um, I remember you from the opening. Hello. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, we have an ED. Uh, that is a very interesting visual. That is actually a great visual in so many ways. Man, just the amount of meaning you can get out of that. I already like the ED. Hey, she's awake. <laughs> I assume the eye patch is for Chuny reasons. And our title? I can't read that. Um, has a kodo, I think, like a like a heartbeat. I no, I'm not sure. That's my guess, though. <laughs> I wonder if we'll get a stinger or anything. That's Yuinya quality? <laughs> what? 
Soda guy, Yui Nya Quoti. That's that's what it says. What what is that title? Okay. Okay. Well, no no preview, no stinger. It's just very because I assume you Yui Nya in this case is the eye patch girl at the end. But yeah, that was the um the second episode of Tante wa Mo Shin de Yudu. And man, I feel like I feel like a not I kind of feel like not a lot happened in the episode, but at the same time, a lot did. Like we didn't really like there was no big case to solve. It was more just a I mean, if there was a case to solve, it was on a more personal level, right? Because we had a bit of a new character show up, uh, Nagisa, right? And first of all, I do want to say uh, when I first watched the opening, like I did kind of think to myself that this this black haired girl. She almost felt like a contrast to Siesta. Just she's like a very different eye color, a very different hair color. She's although she seemed like equally prominent in it and stuff like that. So I was kind of thinking on that level, like what kind of connection they have. I wasn't I never would have guessed heart transplant. I never would have guessed that. I was more thinking something like, um I don't know, cousin or something. I don't know what I was expecting, but I definitely got that vibe with there being some kind of connection there. Between the characters, like she's a bit of a replacement for CSI. I just didn't know why she would be worthy to be a replacement. If that makes sense, that was kind of because I don't think I talked about this at all the first time I saw the opening, but those are the kind of thoughts that were circling through my head. And this episode, we actually got her, uh, Nagisa. And yes, I kind of referenced it, but very, very Monogatari, Sanjigahara esque. If you haven't seen Monogatari, you, you should probably get on that. But when they when they first met, like, um, Sanjigahara just took a stapler, just stuck it in Aragi's mouth, and yeah, very similar to what this girl did, just sticking her fingers just right in there. Just, yeah, that's not not usually how you would go about making friends, but I guess it worked in the end. I mean, it did have special circumstances behind it because obviously the the heart thing, but for the most part, it was still their first time meeting each other. So, very very forward trying to get this guy, this supposed you know legendary detective, to to, to help her, but. Uh, yeah, one thing, I mean, one of the first things that came to mind was just wondering who her voice actress was, so I had actually kind of like had a, like, back and forth, try to check it real quick, because I knew it was going to bug me too much if I didn't check it out, but yeah, it was it was Kirino, or Koneko Kotori, like, she, she's in a few different roles that I recognize, Azusa from Kaon, right? I mean, the voice that sounded the most like was Kirino, because she did kind of have that bitchiness to her upon the first meeting, right? She mellowed out a little bit, uh, not too long afterwards, but she definitely had that Kirino voice for uh, for a good bit there. For sure. So, yeah, once I once I saw that, I was like, okay, that's who she reminds me of. And it definitely, definitely was. So, yeah, her thing was she just, like, she wanted to meet someone. She just didn't know who it was, what they looked like, anything like that. But was still hoping to get help regardless. And he somehow was able to do that. Like, we went over to our bad friend and he was able to, to get it figured out. I just, the, the plan seemed a little bit odd to me. Like, using his hearing ability to see if he's heard that heart before. Like, it, uh, there's, uh, there was a lot of luck that went into that actually working, right? I mean, because under normal circumstances, I feel like that would have not really worked out too well. Like, what are the odds that he's really heard the heart of the girl, whoever had the heart before, and actually remembers it? Like, I mean, I know heartbeats are probably a little bit distinct from each other, but it's not like that distinct, you know? I don't know, so the whole, it seems a bit shaky to me, the, the, the strategy there, but it paid off because of, you know, plot writing reasons so i'm not gonna complain about it too much and yeah the reveal of it was great the way because he tried to stab his tentacle thing into her and i would have figured they would have like the people that put him there would have done something to make it where he can't like use the tentacles on visitors but i guess just they, they don't care enough i i guess i i guess they just you know they just they just don't care so but yeah the way he launched it at her and then it started to like fade away for about I want to say two, one to two seconds. I was wondering why it started to, to fade away. I was thinking, oh, did he just stop real quick and as like a, it was like a bluff kind of thing? Or did they do something? Did the people that put him there give him something to limit how, limit his ability? But then once it got to that train of thought, my mind jumped to the other train of thought, which was, oh, yes, yes, that did a thing to him. You know, we've we seen that fade, that 
the operation before, and it was because of the thing she did to him to to react to her to her body, you know, her, her blood, and yeah, that then that's revealed that the heart is definitely in there. So yeah, that that whole process I want to say took almost two seconds, and then yeah, then it, it confirmed it by reminding the audience exactly what what had happened. But luckily, I did remember. I felt a little bit smart because I did remember, and that was probably the coolest way they could possibly reveal it being it being her heart that I could possibly imagine. Because he could just tell, well, like 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 Bat said, he could just tell them, but that was way more satisfying of a method, for sure. So I did I did quite like that. <laughs> but so what else do what else do I have to say about this episode? I mean, it was basically just a setup episode to bring this new girl into the fold, essentially be that replacement for for uh, for for Siesta, right? And I did reference like Angel Beats and Flyable Heart. Uh, I'm sorry if I kind of spoiled those for you, but uh, you really should have checked this out before watching this video. That's that's my ra that's my rationale. But yeah, definitely heart transplants. Definitely a really cool thing because you can have that sort of like memory emotion going along with it, sort of dynamic, right? Which can add an extra element, kind of like. Because a person could be responsible for saving their life, so they have that gratitude, but they also have a bit of like a almost second kind of will within them, affecting them, so that could kind of lead them to have some mixed feelings, as well as, yeah, having some new, like, affecting what they want to do, right? Like, if it wasn't for a bit of that driving force, you probably never would have met up with our, our sidekick boy over here, so. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that affects things going forward, how they continue to grow closer. And yeah, the first shot of the ED, I really did like it. Like, because we have Nagisa laying on the bed, but with like bars around her. I can't tell the bars are on both sides. Is it at least on one side on the uh on the siesta side? Because it's like because you know, it's like a prison within her and uh that you know, she because she can't like escape the heart, right? The heart's in there to keep her alive, even if the heart has some like lingering stuff that's maybe an inconvenience or whatever you want to call it. Like she still needs it to, to keep going, right? So it's a bit of a prison in that sense, and you have to see us who's always watching, right? Like always just standing there. So I just thought that was really interesting visual on that basis. So that's it that's Yui Nya quality. I mean, that title is probably Yui Nya quality, but yeah, I'm not really sure what to make of that. What did you, what did Yui say before we ended off the episode? Yeah, there's something I'd like to ask a legendary detective to handle. I wonder if I could look at Purpose Actors 2 real quick while I'm already, while I'm already over here. You know, I already have the page for it open. Takao Kanon. Do you recognize her for any, from anything? Uh, I mean, she was Aku. And uh, Maos on a retry. Well, she really hasn't been in much at all. I mean, I yeah, really not much at all. Maybe only like, I mean, she was in Hokago Table Nishi. That was probably, I think that was the biggest role she's had. I think so, actually. She was in Idly Pride, which is a show I never watched, but might at some point. Oh no, she was Latina in uh, Uchi no Ko no Tame Naraba Orewa Mat. You know, that show. She was Latina. Okay, that's her biggest role. Never mind. Yeah, that's okay. She was Latina. That's cool. But yeah, definitely like a really small page of stuff she's been in, so. As far as Yui as a character, the eye patch definitely makes me think Chuni Girl. And the whole, that title, Yui Nya, like, she's gonna be a uh, a silly one, right? That's kind of the impression I get. Like, <laughs> she is gonna be a silly one, that's that's for sure. I definitely look forward to getting more of her. Like, she seemed somewhat prominent in the opening, like, not to the level of someone like Nagisa, but I want to believe she's going to be, like, a somewhat recurring character going forward. I hope so. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. But, yeah, I do think that's all I got to say on the episode. I do quite like a new girl, Nagisa. You know, a bit of a rough, rough meeting, but nothing we can't get past, for sure. Especially when you are that gorgeous. So, Hopefully we can kind of have a good life together. Like, I don't really want to think of her as a replacement for, for, for Siesta. Like, it's, you know, because nobody can truly be replaced. But somebody new in his life to kind of fill the void, right? That's kind of that's kind of what she is. And, I mean, you could certainly do worse in that regard. But, yeah, it was a good episode, for sure. And, I mean, I saw the, I mean, I saw the, the, the Siesta thing, part thing coming a mile away, but... 
aside from that, yeah, it's a really good episode. I'm still pretty pretty invested in the show. I definitely want to see what the whole deal with Yui is and what we're going to do with her, what, what she wants. So, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I do hope you click that like button and support me on Patreon. Maybe leave a comment, maybe watch some more videos. But uh, for now, bye-bye.